Turdox are the handmade wool quilted rugs. They're beautiful. I fell in love with them. We wanted to be sure that, that these women were being paid a fair wage, and they are. Thank you so much for coming today. We have Ann Page Watson and Lizzie Page Watson joining us today from two different parts of the country. Yes, Durham, North Carolina and Jackson, Wyoming. Thanks for coming. So let's just dive right in. Tell me a little bit about coming up, your childhood. Pretty normal childhood. Um, loving parents, played a lot of sports. I was a bit of a tomboy. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that catered to what I do today. What did you think that you were gonna do when you were growing up? That I was gonna to go to law school. How come? Both of my parents are attorneys. And you were excited that your kids were gonna be attorneys as well? I was hoping. You were hoping, yes, yep. So you went out to dinner with your dad. Tell me what happened during that time. Well, I was working at his law firm. Mm -hmm. um, thought I was gonna to go to law school. He said, you're 23, you can do whatever you want. I think it was just, his idea was for me to play for a while and then go get real, <laughs> but sense. I never did. Yes. <laughs> and what did you end up doing? Um, I am a firefighter paramedic, uh, Jackson Hole Fire EMS. I'm a Teton County Search and Rescue member. Wow. Um, I teach for Jackson Hole Outdoor Leadership Institute. Being a firefighter and an EMT is such important work and it's very dangerous. Rumor has it, you were hanging out of a helicopter. We had a call on a mountain, a search and rescue call, a guy having chest pain, he was going up Maverick. We responded with the helicopter. We fly over, look at what's going on, see if you can land and decide whether or not you can. We couldn't, so we had to go do a short haul. So we set up and hang from underneath the ship and get flown into the scene. Um, on a rope and then you sat down and when the crew was flying into the patient they noticed there was a lot of movement so there was actually CPR going on and um, happened to be our medical director was on that first crew that flew in so he's a doctor but he put on the AED automatic external defibrillator they shocked the guy did two rounds of CPR and by the time I flew in in the next group um, they were asking the wife her phone number and some other information, and the husband corrected her on the number. <laughs> wow. So it was a save, which was pretty amazing. But uh, then we flew them out underneath the ship on a rope. And you were on that rope too? Yeah. Wow. That's hmm. a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> that must be an unbelievable passion for you to do that. <laughs> I feel like a little kid when I do it. Let's shift gears a little bit. Tell me what you did. I was home visiting and we took a jewelry class together mm -hmm. and that was really interesting to me. I fell in love with making jewelry. I picked up the sewing again when my son was uh, staging a house, he's a realtor. That's the first time I pulled out my machine in years. You know, life, law school, kids, I just didn't have time for sewing. So I pulled it out again and I just loved it. So when you're making jewelry, how do you feel when you are designing those pieces? Being in my garage, which is where my workshop is, I put on podcasts and I just kind of meditate, to be honest. I just kind of zone out and it's my time to be creative. And uh, it's actually a really good de-stress uh, from my job and from everything else I do. What about you, Anne? It's kind of a left brain versus right brain. My law practice is very much right brain. And I can walk into my sewing room, which is the whole room over my garage, it's all mine and I just feel the stress just fall away, even after a really long, hard day. You're making the jewelry and you're doing some of the sewing. We wanted more ideas for things for her to sew and we, we knew that we did, couldn't make enough products between the two of us mm -hmm. to have, you know, to run a business. Mm -hmm. So we went to High Point Furniture Market mm -hmm. in High Point, North Carolina, mm -hmm. looking for ideas. So we were walking by one shop and that's when we saw the Shirtox. And Shirtox are the handmade wool quilted rugs. Um, they're beautiful. And we fell, I fell in love with them right away. Mm -hmm. And that's where we met Aliyah, which is, she's from Kyrgyzstan. And that's where you order our rugs. So she started this company with her mom, employing women in Kyrgyzstan to make Sherdak rugs. They're handed down from generation to generation and they're handmade um, quilted rugs. These rugs have to be seen in person. They're beautiful. And they're amazingly durable, functional piece of art that you can have in your home. 
So the top layer um, are all merino wool. Very beautiful wool. And then the back is a brown wool that they stitch the top layer to. So they're about a quarter inch thick. How long does it take them to make a rug like this? It takes about a month, I would say. On my first trip to Kyrgyzstan, mm -hmm. I stayed with Aliyah and her mom, Bayel, in their home. Mm -hmm. And we went to the workshop and I was able to watch the women making the rugs, learn about how they make them. What Actually, was impactful about that? It was amazing to see how much work they put into these rugs mm -hmm. and how much time, but how much they also enjoy it. They sit around in a circle, three of them talking, you know, mother, daughter, grandma, making the rugs and their kids are running around. It's just a great atmosphere. They sent out for women in Kyrgyzstan, they sent out a message asking people who know how to make sure ducks. A hundred different women responded and they said, okay, you know, we'll pay you to do a rug and they wanted to see how what the quality was. Mm -hmm. And they came back, they started employing six of those women and they now have 35 artisans today. And one of the things we were doing, she wanted to do in Kyrgyzstan was make sure that we were supporting um, a group of people who were, who were paying fair wages to these people. We didn't want to be supporting a sweat job. And so we wanted to be sure that, that these women were being paid a fair wage and they are. So we'll be looking for more opportunities like that on my last trip to Curry Sands, so I've gone twice now, I took a cinematographer with me and we filmed a documentary about the history of the Sherdox, how they're made, the artisans that make them, and we interviewed the artisans about why they like making Sherdox and uh, their passion for the Sherdox. So hopefully that will be done in the next few months and we'll be putting that on our website and doing a premiere in Jackson. So together, you all have built a business. And what's it called? Page and Company Collection. Why'd you call it that? Our middle names are both Page. Okay. And we are curating uh, items from across the globe. And so that's why we called it the collection. Tell me um, some of your other favorite products that you all sell. Another one of the products that I really fell in love with are the handmade killing bags from Turkey. We carry totes, handbags, and clutches, and they're all made from repurposed Killam rugs, so they're all one of a kind. I love it because it's also recycling rugs. So there's a green component there, so they're all made from rugs. The piece that I think that I loved about your story was that you really seek out um, women-made products. Having that female base is just it's outstanding that you all are providing all of these opportunities by selling these products. That's impact. <laughs>